The human body has many complex systems and interacting components that collectively impact our health and wellness in many ways. While we might not realize it, the human body serves as a host for many microorganisms. For example, a diverse array of bacteria are located in our digestive tracts, forming the gut microbiome. You may have heard that it's important to maintain good gut health by consuming things like probiotic drinks and yogurt. These provide benefits to our overall health by introducing beneficial bacteria to our systems. However, a lesser known bacterial ecosystem in the body is the vaginal microbiome. The female genital tract is colonized by bacteria and the composition of this vaginal microbiome has huge implications for women's reproductive and overall health. Well, what does a healthy microbiome look like? A healthy microbiome or a eubiotic vaginal microbiome is dominated by lactobacillus species. Lactobacillus bacterial species contribute to a healthy vaginal environment through many different mechanisms. First, lactobacillus species produce a compound called lactic acid, which lowers vaginal pH and maintains acidity within the vagina. This acidic environment helps control the growth of other bad or pathogenic organisms in the vagina. Lactobacillus species also exhibit potent antimicrobial activity, protecting the host upon exposure to pathogenic bacteria by producing more antimicrobial compounds and metabolites, for example, hydrogen peroxide or bactericins, which kill bad bacteria. Lastly, lactobacillus species play a protective role in the vagina simply by taking up space. These eubiotic bacteria can outcompete pathogenic bacteria for adhesion sites and resources within the vagina. By dominating the available niches, lactobacilli reduce the available space and nutrients for the growth of pathogenic bacteria. All in all, a eubiotic microbiome acts as a protective shield against pathogens, reducing the risk of infections, including sexually transmitted infections. So now we know that microbiota in the vagina should be dominated by lactobacillus species. However, if there are disturbances to the vaginal flora, the balance of the vaginal microbiome can be altered. Increased diversity of microbes in the vagina can lead to the formation of a polymicrobial vaginal community populated by facultative anaerobic bacteria instead of being dominated by lactobacillus species. This state of increased microbial diversity is defined as a dysbiotic vaginal microbiome and it is associated with complications during pregnancy, preterm birth, and increased susceptibility to various urogenital tract diseases and infections. Research is still ongoing regarding the complex and significant ways in which the vaginal microbiome interacts with and impacts female reproductive health. Here at McMaster University, we have the McMaster Immunology Research Center, where the Kaushik Lab is located. The Kaushik Lab focuses on researching ways to improve women's reproductive health. One of their research interests is investigating how the vaginal microbiome affects infections and outcomes of sexually transmitted viruses. Well, what does the research say about ways to improve the vaginal microbiome? Let's consult our own expert, Dr. Charu Kaushik. Hi, Dr. Kaushik. Can you tell us a bit about what research is currently being done about the vaginal microbiome and improving vaginal health? The vaginal microbiota, like you pointed out earlier, is a relatively newer area, so we know less about it. We do know that lactobacillus is the species when it's dominant, it correlates with good health outcomes for women, both reproductive and uh, in regards to sexually transmitted infections. But a lot of women have a clinical condition called bacterial vaginosis. Uh, which is uh, composed primarily when you have different kinds of anaerobic bacteria instead of lactobacillus dominant environment. Uh, and this is a notoriously recurrent condition that leads to lots of discomfort for women and various symptoms. Uh, that's the condition and it also correlates with high HIV and sexually transmitted infection rates. Many labs in this area are now looking to see how we can resolve this issue both in terms of providing better vaginal health but also better outcomes for reproductive success and decreased STIs in women. 
Uh, and one of the, the current standard of therapy is to give women antibiotics because you, know, you want to kill these bacteria that are leading to this clinical condition. But that doesn't help most women because uh, as you pointed out, there's a certain kind of microenvironment in the vaginal tract uh, and the antibiotics clear the bacteria that you don't want, but they don't bring the good bacteria, the lactobacillus bacteria uh, colonization. So uh, what can you do to do that? So in research, a lot of the labs are now trying to use probiotics, oral or local, and trying to give them in different combinations. Well, our lab, the Kaushik lab, of which uh, Deepika is part of, uh, is actually looking at now to see whether we can try something new. And because we have a long history of looking at vaginal microenvironment in the context of hormones and what they do in that environment. We just finished a phase one clinical trial where we combined giving local estrogen, which is a hormone that encourages lactobacillus growth in combination with oral or vaginal probiotics. Uh, and we're just looking at the results of those to see whether that really helped women. Uh, we did this over a month and we're looking at how long you know, that effect lasted and we're getting some promising results. So we're looking at expanding this into a phase two trial as the next phase of where what we could do to expand uh, women's reproductive health. Wow, all the advancements made in this field are so exciting. What would you say to our viewers about why research and education on women's reproductive health are so important? So it, these studies are really important because uh, a lot of these conditions, you know, women's reproductive health is not talked about openly. We don't talk about topics of vaginal health, women's reproductive health, 